please take a moment to review the following. Um, so the POLIS protocol was conducted in 2002, and it was documented in the Journal of Fertility and Sterility. So this has gotten a ton of attention in the acupuncture and in the fertility community. It compared women undergoing IVF with and without acupuncture just before and just after embryo transfer. So typically, this was happening on site at the time of transfer. An acupuncture treatment takes place, embryo transfer occurs, and then another acupuncture treatment follows it immediately. This study has really brought acupuncture into mainstream fertility clinics. It's what's made it so common. In large part, I think, it's why acupuncture for fertility has become such a hot topic. Um, so we have a lot to thank for this protocol. And it's a, it's a good protocol. It's interesting. So the objective of the protocol was to evaluate the effect of acupuncture on pregnancy rates in ART by comparing a group of patients who were receiving acupuncture treatment shortly before and after embryo transfer with a control group who didn't get any. Uh, it was a perfect perspective randomized study, and it was it took place in a fertility center. Acupuncture was performed in 80 patients for 25 minutes before and after transfer. And in the control group, they just had transfers. There was no other supportive therapy of any kind. Um, clinical pregnancy in these studies was divined, this, de, was defined as the presence of a fetal sac during an ultrasound at six weeks. So it didn't uh, require a heartbeat. They just wanted to see, did implantation take place? Bless you. The results were that clinical pregnancies were documented in 34 out of 80 patients in the acupuncture group and in 21 out of 80 patients in the control group. So roughly 16%. And when we're talking about numbers like this, that's a lot in terms of the increase in the rate. So the conclusion was acupuncture seems to be a useful tool for improving pregnancy rates after ART, and that's why most fertility clinics are pretty open to having acupuncturists come in and do transfers because they want their success rates to go up. So we are actually improving their success rates. Did you raise your hand? Or, oh. The question is, what does a round of IVF cost? Um, I was recently told that in Pakistan it costs $3,000, but in the United States it costs about fifteen dollars to $20,000. <laughs> Do I recommend that people go to Pakistan? No. <laughs> no, I don't. But if they're already there, I don't think they should leave. Um, it's different in different countries. I don't know if maybe, Lauren, you can tell us what it costs a patient out of pocket where there's nationalized health care, like in Canada. Yeah. The drugs are very expensive. The drugs are a huge part of the cost. So here, nothing is free. <laughs> the workup, nothing is free. Um, there are some clinics that accept insurance, that go in network with insurance companies. And unfortunately, in my experience, they because they're in network and they're getting kind of a set amount of money, they tend to skip stuff. So. Sadly, because we're in a for-profit healthcare system, um, you do get what you pay for. And so people who have complicated cases or who need a lot of help, or, you know, I generally recommend that they go to the clinics that I know have great ethics, and it's going to cost them, though. It's very expensive. And so that's part of the, it's part of the drama for people. You know, they weren't expecting to spend their life savings trying to start a family. They were saving it for when their kids are born. So, On the other hand, if they're spending that much money, spending a few hundred dollars more for acupuncture to increase that 
eyes. Right. Now becomes very significant. And what Yvonne said, on the other hand, if people are spending that much money, then spending a little bit more money to do acupuncture becomes a very reasonable thing. And that is true. That is true. It's interesting. I mean, I will find people uh, wanting packages and wanting reduced pricing and all that stuff because they're overwhelmed financially. So you have to decide in your practice if you're open to that in light of the fact that their clinic is probably not giving them a similar discount. And, and percentage-wise, you're earning a lot less um, than the MD is. So this is what the protocol looks like. Pre-transfer, pericardium 6, liver 3, spleen 8, stomach 29, and do 20. And then these ear points, they can either be done with needles, tacks, or seeds. I like using seeds. Um, I send my patients home with them in, and I have them massage them periodically over the next day or so. Following the transfer, this is the protocol. LI4 and spleen 6 with stomach 36 and do 20. LI4 and spleen 6 are contraindicated in pregnancy, and people frequently ask me, why is this in here? The patient is not pregnant yet, and these points help with cramping. Um, they help with stress, and they help with circulation of chi. And again, this is a dynamic process implantation, so nothing that you're doing with these points would disrupt a pregnancy that supports it. Dr. Farrell is going to talk to you finally for a few <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Take a break. So we're about to show you some modifications on this polis protocol. And the reason behind that is because we want to, once again, bring that idea of the feminine back into the process. And we are also um, looking to give a greater context to the experience in a sort of way of um, supporting that prenatal energy by using the eight extras without you know, decimating the protocol, because once again, this is a protocol that's been researched. We know it works. We know it has impact. So um, before I go on to talk about these things, I want to go right back here and look at these two treatments. Already, you can begin to see with the first two points on the pre-transfer um, protocol that there is an element of the yin way here. Right, pericardium six is the master point of the yin way. Liver three is on the trajectory and resonant with the function of the yin way. And so, really, we're beginning in the pre transfer treatment to open the idea of internalizing this new life. Right, that's what the yin way does it brings energy into the body. So we're bringing now a foreign energy into the body, something that's been fertilized in a Petri dish outside of the womb, no longer part of the, the reproductive system, right? And we're going to have to take that, that life form, those, that blastocyst that is outside the body when fertilization occurs, and we're going to try to internalize it and bring it back into the body. So we want to create an optimal environment for that internalization, which you'll see when we do the modifications, we've emphasized the yin wei component of the treatment. In the post-transfer, what we're doing is, OK, it's already in there now, and we want um, to create the best environment for implantation once that uh, blastocyst gets back into the body. So here you can already begin to see with LI4, spleen 6, and stomach 36 that the emphasis is on earth, on generating good earth. Remember early on in the first day, yesterday we talked about this idea of the Po, the spirit, uh, the heavenly mandate coming in and wanting to be earthbound, coming into form. So how we get something into form is we generate earth. So the post-transfer protocol is already generating earth for implantation. 
and we're going to reinforce that with our modifications. So you, you begin to see when we bring up these modifications that they make sense in terms of reinforcing what we already know works. So we're not going to take away from what we know works, we're just going to add to it. And we're going to add to it by remembering that what we're dealing with is a heavenly mandate here, right? As, as Jeffrey Yuan says, you have to pray for the heavens to bestow a child on you. The more you struggle, the more you have to pray. And by pray, what we're talking about here is the more you have to bring your intent and your consciousness in alignment with the desire for motherhood, right? Um, and Chinese medicine, because of its ultimate focus on balance and restoring balance, can provide a huge support in this IVF process. And we already have talked about sort of this idea of the energetics of conception. And we're going to go in a little more detail with some of the eight extras and how they uh, support the energetics of conception. But we already know that these eight extras do that. Um, and then we'll talk about the variations on these protocols. So heavenly mandate, what we're talking about uh, is that reminder that you have to bring yourself into alignment consciously with intent, right, in order to have this be successful. So. Um, I was talking to Marissa over the break, and she's talking about she's um, been doing these pre- and post-transfer treatments that we do with the modifications um, in the offices during transfers. And she also spends her time, as does Laura and anybody else that we're training to do these protocols, um, creating a loving and receptive environment while this um, clinical thing is happening, right? There's a very medical clinical thing happening with the transfer and we're trying to create a balance by bringing the feminine back into that process. So having the husband holding his wife's hand in a loving way or the partner holding the woman's hands in a loving and uh, gentle way and putting both of their hearts into this process that this is the moment that they've been working towards and they want to create the best loving and most compassionate environment for this. So all of these things are um, directed towards the intent of receiving the heavenly mandate, right? The mood, the connection between the parents. And okay, let's say it's a single woman who's using a donor, sperm donor, and she's there by herself. Then as a practitioner, you hold her hand. You tell her how wonderful this is, that she's being open to receiving this and that motherhood is going to be a wonderful thing for her. You provide that for her so that she can receive that heavenly mandate in the most loving way. Um, So we take an established protocol and we look towards finding ways to um, support that by using the eight extras. So one of the vessels we're going to use, as we've been using all along, is the Ren mine. And we're going to um, remember in the process that the Renmai is the sea of yin, that we're bringing the feminine back, that we're bringing yin back to this protocol, that the Renmai is also the vessel of containment, that we want to be able to provide the most loving, the most nourishing, the most supportive container for this new life coming in. Um, the Renmai also is the ultimate representation of the archetype of the mother, so we're supporting that desire that the woman has to become a mother. We're bringing nourishment, as the Renmai does, to the uterus. We're supporting the relationship between the lung and kidney, between the heavenly mandate and the source energy of the kidneys, right? So the Renmai will come in here. Um, I 
the yin chow, the ren mai and the yin chow are usually um, the vessels that we use in the post transfer, right? And the yin wei is the one that's used in the pre transfer. So here the yin chow is going to support the ren mai in the generation and dis distribution of yin. Um, this is also a very powerful vessel energetically for helping people get internally aligned with the process completely. So it helps them to trust the process. It helps to uh, reduce fear of failure, fear of um, any consequences or uh, side effects of treatment. It, it really helps to sort of peop get people centered and aligned with what it is their ultimate goal is. The yin way we're going to use, as you saw in the pre-transfer with pericardium 6, because uh, this vessel is a linking vessel, it links all the yin in the body. So if we're trying to bring yin in, if we're trying to allocate yin, then linking yin in every way that we can is uh, the most important thing that we can do. This will also, this way vessel uses the resources of the Renmai appropriately. So if we start out with this in the pre-transfer, what we're saying is, okay, get ready. We're going to start using the resources of the Renmai. We're going to direct them to where they need to go. We're going to direct them to the uterus. We're going to direct them to receiving the heavenly mandate. Everything is going to be directed by the Yinwei. Um, it, the Yinwei is the energy of internalizing. It is the energy of taking in, taking something from the outside and bringing it in and embodying it and claiming ownership of it. Um, so it supports the mother's desire for the pregnancy. It supports um, uh, the resources for pregnancy. And it makes a woman more readily able to receive the heavenly mandate, which is exactly what you want in a pre-transfer protocol. For more information on this or other Prodi Live distance or online courses, please visit www.prodeseminars.com.